to kick us off this morning, we have the honor and privilege of Tan Sri Malkayo, president of the KSI Strategic Institute for Asia Pacific, aka my boss, to give the welcoming remarks. Tan Sri Malkayo, the floor is yours. Thank you, Zahim. Selamat pagi, selamat datang, salam sejahtera. Good morning and welcome to all of you to this first virtual Malaysian housing and property summit. Yang berhormat Dato' Sri Zoraida Kamaruddin, Minister of Housing and Local Government. Yang berbahagia Dato' Sri Koping Kang, President of FIAPSI. Tan Sri Tan Sri, Dato' Dato, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen. I wish to extend a very warm welcome to all of you to this first virtual housing and property summit. We are delighted that we have 277 participants who have registered for this virtual summit, a lot more than we do have at our regular physical summits. So this is outstanding to have so many people coming in this morning for today's summit. I wish to thank the Honourable Minister for giving us a recorded video for today's keynote address and to thank her for taking her time off despite the busy schedule in Parliament that started yesterday. I wish to also at the outset extend our warmest congratulations to the President of FIAPSI, Yang Babahagia Dato Sri Koping Kang, on being conferred the Dato Sri by the Governor of Penang recently. Yep. Congratulations, Dato Thank Sri. Thank you very much. Thank you for the wishes. Today we meet in a new normal. And this new normal is impacting not only on the housing and property sector, but in all economic sectors, not only in Malaysia, but worldwide. We all recognize that the housing and property sector is a key economic sector that will drive economic growth. And hence, ensuring the sustainable and quick recovery of the housing and property sector is essential to having national economic recovery in place. Yesterday, the Prime Minister has tabled the National Recovery Plan in Parliament, and we do hope that there will be further discussions and inputs on how the recovery plan can be effectively implemented or be further improved. And if today our discussions can come up with fruitful suggestions, we would be happy to also convey recommendations from today's summit to the National Recovery Council for their consideration. We need to chart a recovery of the housing and property sector, as well as the entire economy, because national economic recovery is so vital today to get business back, to get the economy moving once again. Many livelihoods have been affected over the last two years. Many businesses have been affected. Some have even closed down. So we all need to work together to ensure that we get the economy moving again. And we need the government to also become more responsive to the needs and the considerations of the business community and the private sector. And this collaborative effort between government, business, and perhaps even the civil society is essential to get the country moving once again. We do hope that reopening of the economy can be hastened and that we can all build back better with the housing and property sector taking the lead in building back better for the whole nation. I believe that going forward, the housing and property sector will have to address three key challenges sustainability, innovation, and technology. We all need to ensure that we are able to remain sustainable and sustainability and embracing the SDGs would be an important consideration for the housing and property industry going forward. We have a special session on sustainability later this morning, and hopefully the speakers there will come up with good suggestions as well. Secondly, the property industry needs to be innovative. We need to ensure new solutions. We need to be able to develop innovation 
because innovation will be key to reshaping the property industry in the future. And technology is a great game changer, not only for the housing and property sector, but for all sectors in the Malaysian economy. So we need to ensure that property sector is able to embrace technology and with perhaps a faster rollout of industrialized building systems, IBS, to ensure that technology is further embedded in the housing industry. So I believe these are some of the key challenges that we need to address. I'm very sure that many of the other speakers joining us today would be able to add on to the discussions and to our deliberations today. I wish to once again thank our distinguished speakers for sharing your thoughts with us and spend, for spending time today with us at this summit. A big thank you also to our corporate sponsors without which this conference would not have been possible. So thank you to the sponsors, speakers, and thank you to all participants, all to our ranks of the servant of you who have joined us today. Sekian, terima kasih. Thank you so much, Sanstri Makayo, for that very insightful remarks. If I can quickly recap Sanstri's point, we need uh, the government to be responsive. We need industry players to collaborate with each other to build back better. Sanstri mentioned about the three, uh, the SIT, uh, sustainability, innovation and technology, sustainability, uh, making sure that the industry is uh, complying with ESG and in line with the 2030 global agenda for the uh, sustainable development goals and innovation not looking at the best practices, but also the next practices when it comes to business practices and new business models uh, and technology, uh, property technology in line with the IR 4.0, looking at uh, emerging technologies such as AI, blockchain, uh, cloud computing, and uh, data, whether big or small. Thank you so much, Sanstri Michael Yo, for those very insightful remarks. Now we have another special guest to deliver the welcoming address. Uh, let's invite Datuk Sri Ko Ping Kang, President of FIAPC Malaysia and Deputy President and Chief Operating Officer of SPCTR Group. Datuk Sri, the floor is yours. Selamat pagi, good morning. Uh, thank you, the Housing uh, Minister and the, uh, for uh, supporting this uh, property summit, which is very timely and important. Thank you, the President of KSI, Tan Sri Michael Yu, for organizing this important seminar. Uh, on behalf of FEPSI, I'd like to thank the corporate sponsor and the distinguished panelists and speaker uh, for supporting uh, such an important summit at this point in time, uh, targeting how to recover from economy, uh, not a recession, but it's a slowdown, and uh, which we want to talk about it a little bit later. We know that this pandemic has caused a lot of suffering. I know that it's the hard for a lot of people, especially hospitality businesses and tourism. But what I want to say is don't give up. I want to express optimism that we are at the end of the tunnel. We can see the light. Unlike the previous recessions, the currency was hit. Stock markets were better very badly, collapsed a banking system, Today, we are quite stable in terms of currency. Stock market is still there. Banking system is very resilient. Our palm oil is doing very well. Petroleum recently has gone up so well to 60 plus uh, dollar per barrel. And with this fundamental behind it, and we think that the vaccination program is working very well. Uh, SB Satya is actually running six vaccination center. Uh, one day we do about 20,000 plus of the vaccination and I can see it's coming in. Uh, uh, we are almost uh, at the peak very soon. Um, and therefore, please keep the optimism. And I think most likely September, October, we will hit the, the herd immunity target and then the economy open up. Let's prepare for the opening of the economy, don't get into depressions or pessimistic, it won't do you any good. And be very careful about the, the headline in the social media, the doomsayer, the armchair critic, keep on saying how bad is bad. 
I'm telling you, if we are in this sort of emotions, we will not able to catch opportunity when they come. For example, 2020, during the time, the second half, a lot of them say, so how bad is bad? Uh, it, it was, uh, you know, it will be a wipeout year. But fortunately, we have enough big provide the data showing that 2020 second half, the property market is doing better than 2019. And on top of it, the overhang has reduced since 2019. And sometimes a lot of them say, uh, I'm check with it, want to talk about a big headline, bad overhang, government more imposition of the rule to control developer. I think we must thank NAPIT to give us the data and uh, we have to go into detail to not impose too many rules and regulation to suffocate the industry further. And I think the 2nd of August, uh, FEPSI will issue uh, uh, some uh, small analysis uh, in the age on the 2nd of August to show that uh, our economy is resilient and we need to plan, we need to change our mindset so that we can move forward. And of course, uh, we all miss the good old days of the 2110 uh, to, one, uh, to 2014, whereby we design anything also sell. Today, I think all of us must change the mindset, like uh, Tan Sri Michael said that, you know, there are certain innovation we have to create in our way of doing things in order to suit the market demand. Today, the design philosophy will be a healthy lifestyle, sustainability, and most important is digitalizations. This is the way to go. And it's actually the pandemic actually speed up the whole process. Sometimes it will take one year, two years for us to do the video conferencing. Uh, the Microsoft Team 360 has been there for quite some time because the pandemic is speed up the whole thing. Sometimes this process, it takes five years to do it. Now it's become one year. So catch the wind and move on with the new norm of doing things. And the most important thing for me is the uh, the government must lead the way, like the HOC. Government started the fiscal policy to inject infrastructure project into the uh, market. The same as the, the past three recession we have done by 86, we have the North Star Highway, 1997, they have their own uh, deferred payment scheme for the uh, infrastructure. I think government lead the way, the rest of businesses will follow. And the key things for me now is we have reached quite a high number of vaccinations. And I think the government must quickly formulate the policy, where can we open the businesses so that those workers with vaccinate, vaccination can start productions and start the business. And those customer really vaccinated can actually keep in the economy to move the uh, our, our momentum. And besides that, I, I would like to uh, further talk to the government also. Uh, we need to, uh, especially the property industry, for example, the lemon 2 h this is my second home. It is such an attraction uh, for the high-end property. This is one of the things that we must actually formulate a policy and get the riot and the industry to move on really. And uh, FEPSI would like to uh, be the main player to facilitate such a uh, momentum. And in any way, we would like to receive any comment, any suggestion so that we can take it to the government. Let's move on. Let's be optimistic. We have seen the light at the end of the tunnel and get, let's get ready for the new economy and I am very, very confident that we will do well in Malaysia. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Sri Kopeg Hang. If I can uh, recap your speech, I think you had the three M's. First is move forward with optimism as we move towards herd immunity target by September or October. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. The second M is mindset change. Property developers uh, and players need to uh, move past beyond the 2014 boom markets. I remember those times very, very well because uh, I'm a buyer. I remember those times uh, vividly. Uh, you know, the, the those, those times uh, we, you know were great, but I think uh, property players need to move past uh, through it and, and look for new practices and business models. 
third one is M uh, for for model and and you know having a new model in mind as you move through the post pandemic era. And uh, Datuk Sri was mentioning about uh, government is to relook at the the Malaysia My Second Home uh, MM2H uh, initiative so that it allows the industry players to leverage on that and and. Uh, rebuild the economy. Now, thank you so much, Dr. Sudhir, for that uh, very insightful speech. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have now the, the honor and privilege of having YB, Dato Hajjah Zuraida Kamaluddin, Minister of Housing and Local Government, to deliver the opening keynote address. The Minister's speech will be touching on the theme of this event, which is resetting and rebuilding the housing and property industry in the new normal. So, with that, I'd like to invite Why be that to Hajjah Zuraida Kamaluddin, Minister of Housing and Local Government, to deliver the opening keynote address? Why be that to dipersilakan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalam. Wala ashrafil wa musallin. Wala alihi wasohbi ajmain. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good morning to all of you. Tan Sri Michael Yeo, President of KSI Strategic Institute for Asia Pacific. Datuk Ko Peng Kang, President FIABC Malaysia, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to be here today at the 2021 Malaysian Housing and Property Summit, co-organized by KSI Strategic Institute for Asia Pacific and FIABC Malaysia. First and foremost, I would like to thank Tan Sri Dr. Michael Yeo and his team for his continuous effort in contributing new ideas, strategies and formulas to the business community, especially in these uncertain and volatile times. I would also like to extend my gratitude to Dr. Ko Peng Kang, President of FIAPC Malaysia, for his effort in organizing this event. Allow me to also thank all of you for taking time to attend this auspicious virtual summit. Ladies and gentlemen, Many economic research expects Malaysia's gross domestic product to grow by 4.4% this year, down from its earlier forecast of 5.6% on the back of the impact of the lockdown and the severe financial constraints facing the country. After contracting by 5.6% in 2020, Malaysia's GDP slid by 0.5% in the first quarter of 2021 mainly due to an improvement in export performance and domestic demand. The lockdown's adverse impact is reflected in the rollout by the government various stimulus packages, many non-fiscal measures including the loan moratorium and allowing another withdrawal by members of the Employees Provident Fund, EPF. In early July 2021, the government unveiled the National People's Wellbeing and Economic Recovery Package, PEMULE, totaling 150 billion rm to help ease the financial burden of malaysians the government had also unveiled rm 20 billion per merkasa package in march and the rm 40 billion per merkasa plus package in may the government was slash its previous 2021 gdp forecast of 6% to 4.5% for 2021 this comes as the latest enhanced movement control order emco enforced in most parts of the klang valley in for, is forecasted to derail the economic recovery momentum the coronavirus or covid-19 has brought the whole world to a standstill and the property market is no exception with mounting pressure on the supply and demand it is expected that there will be lower activity in leasing and investment in commercial office the covid-19 pandemic and movement control order has forced companies to limit or halt physical operations pushing them to work remotely and with much limitations business sentiment is at its lowest level with many operations severely impacted by the outbreak The sense of uncertainty will lead to slower demand as businesses and occupiers will likely continue to postpone major expansion or relocation decisions. In the immediate term preceding the lifting of the current MCO, co-working or flexible space may be less popular as there will be reduced desire for clients or members to congregate and interact face to face in one location. Revenue derived from membership fees and events may be affected during this period although e events will continue to progress the country's property market was clobbered as a result the fear of the virus outbreak is definitely leading to fewer home seekers as well as some listings being delayed 
Moreover, buyers were unable to fulfill their obligations with regards to processes like completing documentation and process progress payments as financial institutions had scaled down operations in, in adherence to the MCO. Developers and builders, too, are not likely to meet their completion deadlines as the whole supply chain was interrupted. However, I believe that once confidence has been restored with businesses back to work and in operations, the market will pick up. To stay competitive in the, in the market as well as to withstand the economic challenges and uncertainties, developers have adjusted their business strategies to suit the market recession. In this sense, developers are believed to be prepared enough to cope with the impact of the pandemic and have an even adapted to the new norm in the post-COVID-19 business environment. One should also realize that houses may not necessarily be more affordable in the post-COVID-19 era. This is because during the economic crisis, not only the housing market is going through adjustment, but other markets are also doing the same, particularly the labor market and the financial sector. Wage growth could be lower or zero during the crisis, and the unemployment rate could hit a higher level than any other periods, leading to negative household debt servicing capacity. Meanwhile, banks are likely to tighten their lending conditions to reduce their exposure to a higher risk of possible default from mortgage payments, making it even harder for first-time home buyers to enter the market. For the real estate sector to thrive again, what are the key trends that will impact the sector in the months ahead? The Monetary Policy Committee of Bank Negara Malaysia kept the overnight policy rate at 1.75% in its most recent review in November, citing significant improvement in economic activity during quarter three 2020. The MPC also believes the current monetary policy stance is appropriate and accommodating, adding that this year's cumulative 125 basis point reduction will continue to provide stimulus for the economy. This is good news for property seekers as continuous low interest rates means lower barriers to financing and owning a property. Lower overnight policy rate allows buyers to lock in lower interest rates favorable to current financial standings, especially those finding it difficult to fork out higher monthly loan repayments. Another trend is the need to continue with the mega projects to create the multiplier effects. Under budget 2021's and RM15 billion allocation to revive and ensure the continuity of several mega projects, is expected to provide a positive boost to the real estate industry. Indirectly, these mega projects will complement upcoming residential and commercial developments within the vicinity and spur further development of rural areas, resulting in a huge economic lift. Mega projects such as Mass Rapid Transit Line 3 in Klang Valley, Pan Bonier Highway across Sabah and Sarawak, to name a couple represent substantial multiplier effects on the property market with positive price movement in established locations within the proximity. The creation of fresh property opportunities will open up new investment hotspots and provide social economic growth for the future. The reintroduction of the HOC, a government-initiated campaign that boosted the market in 2019, has been widely seen as an important life buoy for the industry throughout 2020. Without it, market watchers agree the situation might have been far worse than the comparatively flat performance witnessed thus far. HOC is projected to play a more impactful role in resuscitating buyer interest. The good news is that home ownership campaign HOC incentives will remain in play for the rest of 2021. Exemptions on stamp duty on instruments of transfer and loan financing limits of above 70 percent being made available to the public will largely benefit first-time home buyers to own a property. Once the economy shows signs of picking up the pace of recovery, first-time buyers, those eyeing bigger spaces and investors adopting the wait and see approach due to uncertainty in 2020 will be eager to make a move on the home ownership campaign incentives. Ladies and gentlemen, one positive outcome of a pandemic's challenge, property industry is increased in innovation and a greater focus on digital solutions. Out of necessity, 2020 saw a marked rise in digitalization initiatives by key property players 
who have accelerated their capacity to market products and engage with buyers via online platforms. Interaction with sales representatives to facilitate a transaction with enhanced convenience is also going to pave the future on how developers market and sell their units moving forward. This is a timely evolution given that millennials who are accustomed to e-commerce habits are now mid-20s to, to late-30s and represent the largest segment of the house buying market locally. This trend is, is expected to grow in 2021 and beyond as developers and real estate agents begin to understand and embrace the advantage of a strong digital presence as a long-term strategy. One segment of society we must never forget is the need for affordable housing for the B40 segment. Budget 2021 revealed that the government will be increasing its focus on affordable housing in the coming year, announcing several measures that will incentivize home ownership among the lower income segment of the population. They represent a large mismatched community who have difficulties owning a property, especially in the city, as property piece prices are beyond their affordability levels, given that the B40 median household income is 3,166 RM per month. This means they would be, uh, they would only be able to afford properties below RM 300,000, a near impossible fine in urbanized areas. Therefore, to increase property ownership among the B40 moving into 2021, these initiatives were announced. RM 500 million allocation to build up 14,000 housing units under the People's Housing Program, PPR. RM 1.2 billion allocation for construction of affordable housing. RM 315 million allocation to build 3,000 units of Rumah Mesra Rakyat. RM 310 million for program Perumahan Penjawat Awam Malaysia, housing program for civil servants. These measures will allow private developers to focus more on free market housing while allowing the government to take the responsibility to take the to take uh, the responsibility to provide more cohesive housing for the people. Additionally, promoting rent to own scheme for this affordable housing will further help address the worries in relation to home ownership for the youth who face difficulty in getting loans and insufficient upfront costs to fork out. This could help cushion the issue of property overhang in the country, which involves affordable homes priced below 300,000, amounting to 10,032 units out of the total in the first half of 2020, according to the Valuation and Property Services Department, JPPH. Other initiatives the government has put in place includes the stamp duty exemption on purchase of residential property under HOC 2021, Home buyers will be able to enjoy full stamp duty exemption on the instrument of transfer for residential properties priced up to 1 million for properties that are worth more than 1 million RM up to, to RM 2.5 million. 3% stamp duty on the instrument of transfer for the amount that is more than RM 1 million. On the other hand, full stamp duty exemption is given on instrument as instrument of securing loans. Stamp duty exemptions on M&A instruments by SMEs, this initiative is created to help local companies build their capacity and encourage the merger of two SME entities or the acquisition of an SME entity by another SME to become a new and larger business entity. The stamp duty exemption will be given for M&A instruments include agreements for the sale or lease of properties including land, buildings, machinery and equipment. Instruments of transfer and memorandum of understanding, loan or financing agreement and the first lease or, or, or tenancy agreement. LPGT exemption is given up to three residential properties per individual. Following the gazetting of real property gains tax exemption order 2020 on 28 July 2020 exemption order, an individual is exempted from paying LPGT on the chargeable gain accruing on the disposal of up to three units of residential property provided certain conditions are fulfilled. The real estate industry and the national economy have a mutual and close tie and a far-reaching impact. From an economic standpoint, function of real estate industry in the, in the national economy could be reflected from its role in inducing direct economic effect as for the other industries such as 
construction, manufacturing, banking, and the professionals that provide services to the real estate industry. Therefore, it is wise and right decision for the Malaysian government to revitalize and guide the real estate industry via initiatives introduced so to make this industry continues to play an active role in stimulating economic growth. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I would like to end this speech with a quote. Without restoring an ethos of social responsibility, there can be no meaningful and sustained economic recovery. Jeffrey Sachs. I wish all of you a fruitful conference and my appreciation to KSI and FAPC for inviting me here today. Thank you very much. All the best to all of you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.